Hello once again. Welcome to Barcelona and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's day five of the main event. That means it's the penultimate day of EPT Barcelona, the day when we play down to the final table. We finished play last night with two tables. 16 remain. Today, we play down to six, which means, simple mathematics, 10 eliminations to go until we have the six pros will compete for that first prize of 1.66 million euros. Hello, everyone. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Let's start with the chip leaders. Sousa comes into play with the biggest stack, 116 big blinds. Martin Sujo, a former EPT runner-up, is second in chips. He's also got more than 100 bigs. Other players we've seen over the last few days include Balakrishna Patur, he's got 91 bigs. Johan Starakas, who goes back to season one of the EPT, one of three Swedes remaining, he's got a 70 big blind stack. And the second half of the leaderboard, the bottom eight, we've got Kuli Sidhu, a two-time EPT finalist, Alexander Iverson, Philippe Salgado, Simon Brandstrom, Leandro Bastillo, the Argentinian qualifier, Shannon Shaw, who's going to be on the main stage today, Cyril Mombrou-Masso, who pulled off that incredible bluff on the last hand of play last night, and Diego Falcone, one of the other Brazilian players remaining. We've still got 15 minutes to play at the 30-60 blind level before we roll into level 28. So we'll keep tabs on the outer table. Our primary focus will be the feature table. Let's have a look at the lineup in seat order. We've got the Frenchman, Mombra Masso. We've got Shannon Shaw. Bracco, who's been a big stack for what seems like the last three days. Kuli Sidhu, Balakrishna Patur. I know some people don't like the fact that he seems to use every single second of his shot clock on every single decision, but some of his plays have been interesting, creative. Definitely fun to watch. And we've got the chip leader in the eighth seat, Rui Sousa, the Portuguese player, starting play with close to 7 million chips. There are roughly 60 million chips in play. Average stack is 3.7 million. You fired up for today, Spraggy? Excited, yes. Um, always good to see how these felt. I was just, as you did the chip count, say, I really like the fact that we're coming down to this stage of the tournament and the, the shortest stack has, I believe, 30 big blinds yeah. at this point, which is nice because um, you don't really want to get to this stage of a tournament and, and just have it turn into a, a shove fest, right? It gives these players a chance to show what they've got and take a shot at the title. They inevitably, inevitably become points, or at least a point, where it does become a little bit shovey, where the average stack gets super shallow, but we're by no means anywhere near that yet. And this is an important day the race to the final table. Yeah. So a raise from Bracco under the gun plus one with King Six suited. Patur with nines. Big Papa Patur. You think we'll see a repop from Big Papa Patur? I think of these stack depths versus early position, probably just a call. It, it's a decent hand, but probably not one he wants to three bet and get four bet, especially given yesterday we saw him three bet fold with the ace king. So I think we're more likely to see him try and take flops here. Call he does. Sousa. Folds the small blind. <coughs> Mombrou Masso in the big with 5-3 off. Come on, get in there. Ah. I'm also excited to see how this works. I mean, Mombrou Masso, that bluff yesterday, that was an incredible hand, and we had Patoa mixing it up as well. So it looks like we've got an exciting table ahead too. I told you, you got to get in there with the five tray. So... A straight draw and backdoor hearts for Braco. Patur, 70% favorite near enough with the overpair to the board. But the Italian will continue for 160K. And his situation here is probably quite similar to the, the situation pre-flop in that he's got a decent hand, a pretty strong hand. But he might not want to raise it and then end up having another raise on top. So anticipate just coming along with a call to a turn. For what reason would you need to recheck your cards there? 
heart check? Maybe to make sure you don't have sixes? I mean, yeah, a heart check makes no sense. Worried about running hearts. He's got a blocker to that. <laughs> don't start him off, James. Well, you predicted a call, Spraggy. In fact, we get a raise to 400,000. Yep, and that's the last time today I'm going to try and second-guess Patur's action. As I said, he does like to mix it up. I think your problem was you tried to first-guess it. Correct. Yesterday was different. Second-guessing it, I think, is going to be pretty reasonable. <laughs> Bracco has called. This is optimistic. Turn card is the 10 of diamonds, takes away his backdoor flush draw. Still has a gut shot, plus his king is live. It's a little bit of a wide peel on the flop, but he can still have the best hand sometimes if he thinks Pator is uh, at it with a hand, just like seven, eight with a backdoor flush draw or something like that. Of course, has the gut shot, but the turn not doing him any favors. And now the hand becomes really difficult to play, facing the aggression on the flop. He's now out of position. Check, check, though. Queen River. Bracco's going to bluff the river. <laughs> oh my goodness. How much is that? 600,000, half pot. This is a situation where Bracco can still have sets, deuces, threes, fives, tens, queens. He can have pocket kings, pocket aces. And if he does feel like Pator's raising hand on the flop like sixes, sevens, eights, or nines, he could very well get him to fold it here because he still has all of those strong hands in his range. I like how Spraggy's doing a very earnest job of analysis uh, on two guys who are kind of playing this game the way I play Street Fighter. Clicking all the buttons, but not necessarily in the right order. Every once in a while, I will land a scissor kick. <laughs> oh my wow. God, this is fantastic. This is so good. I told you. Bluffing with the best hand, question mark? These two guys are just bluffing and re-bluffing each other on every street. Now, I assume this is Hollywooding. He's not actually considering heroing with King High, is he? Well, he's in the time bank. No, 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 I, I can't. There's no analysis I can give where King High <laughs> might be. It's a reasonable call here. I mean, this well, here's is... the thing for Bracco. We just mentioned how he can have all the strong hands. Like, he could just have ace four suited. He could just have pocket tens. He could just have pocket queens. So call the all-in when you have those hands. Don't do anything silly with king six. It's just Hollywooding. And, uh, well, if he's using time bank cards, I'm, I'm baffled <laughs> because that's kind of wasted resources for a Hollywood, which doesn't seem worth. This is some um, M. Bison versus Sangeef button mashing on both sides. Just two guys rolling a double-A battery across the controller. Your analysis has been on point throughout this hand, Spraggy, but your predictions were 100% incorrect. There well, it is. Well, he does eventually fold. If he'd have called, that would have been off you, commentary for the rest of the day, unfortunately. You I got wouldn't have been able to right, deal buddy. with this table. <laughs> wow, what a start. So, Patur up to 6.7 million, closing in on the chip lead of Rui Sousa. And Pasquale Bracco down to 3.4 million, but that is still a 56 big blind stack and around average right now with three minutes left on the level before the blinds go up to 40-80. And we pick up this hand on the flop, which is king, king, six. And that's a bet of half a million from Lou. Those are the big chips. The 100Ks.
Martin Suzor came second in EPT Prague in 2016. Calls the 500k, taking us to the turn. That means there's more than a million in the middle, everybody. Five of diamonds. If you're going to do the pot, you have to do it in the style of Mathis in Casino Royale. More than a million in the pot. Okay. <laughs> and that is a bet of one million from Lou. Bond will have to go all in. I know we're not supposed to read too much into stuff like this, but if you notice he's taking his chips, he's using only the big chips. And I think people are a little bit more confident when they use their big chips. People tend to want to hold on to those more. Just a little extra psychology. That you Joe, can, Mike, Caro, Stapleton. Yeah, you can use to go along with your blockers and your solvers. A fold from Suzo. We still have 16 players, eight at this table and eight on the main stage on our feature table. Randstrom folds under the gun. Louis Sousa is also folded. Round to Shannon Shaw. Deuces in the hijack. You know what they say. Deuces often win. Yep. A decent hand for a raise and hopefully flop a set. The old saying. <laughs> that popular children's song Sorry. from the sea. Raise with deuces and hopefully flop a set. King 10 of diamonds for Sidhu. Playing around 3.7 million. Makes the call. And Pator in the big blind. Getting a good price. It's going to have to be real <coughs> ugly for him not to get involved. One would imagine. King Queen. All right. 165, right? That is right. right. Weird. So three way to the flop. Does anybody want to see a king and a deuce on this flop? I'm very excited about this pot. Instead, it is ace, jack, seven with two diamonds. Diamonds are for Sidhu. Sidhu flops absolutely massive here. Has the gut shot straight draw, has the nut flush draw. Patur Pat with the gut shot and, sorry, I thought he had king, queen of clubs, just the gut shot. And Shannon Shaw's hand has shriveled to nothing. The patented Patur double check. And the double tap, the single check. It's kind of easy for his opponents to connect here. I'm not sure Shannon Shaw will even want to continuation bet. Even a hand like 9-10 going to stick around, Queen-10. Very difficult not to have some sort of gut shot, even with 8-9. Not to mention all the pairs. So we do see it check through. Pator in the big blind with King-Queen. With the nut no pair. If you give a hand a name, it makes it seem even better. <laughs> so weird that the deuces are still the best hand. Yeah. All very well having the best hand, of course, but I'd been able to get it to showdown, and I don't think that's going to be possible against these two holdings. Or these two players, at least. Pator reaching for chips. Five. Almost 
575,000 in the pot. Patur makes it 325,000. This is some patented Patur. Can't blame him though. Best hand folds. Sidhu still with a pretty strong draw, can also have the best hand with King High. At least some of the time. Just don't see how you can fold a draw to the nuts. Yep, he's taken a river. Sorry, the nut flush at least. <coughs> and Both players pair the king. So neither playing their kicker. Kings and sevens with the ace on board. Is anyone going to be able to steal the whole pot, though, Spraggy? That's the question. I think this card probably slows a player's hand. Pator may feel like he's able to show down at this point. Whereas, I think on a blank river, Pator would have been a favorite to take it. He had the betting lead on the turn. Marlin. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pator slowing down, is it? He didn't oh. even give me the chance to say what I thought he was going to do, which is that he doesn't slow down. He only keeps his foot on the gas. This guy's got one gear, and that gear is insanity. And this is all in to call for Kuli Sadu. I and he falls. Any way he can. He gets him off the chop. I promise you that this style will work 100% of the time until it doesn't. And Balakrishna Patur now has the biggest stack at the feature table with 6.96 million. Thank you. Two words to describe that man. Unexploitable. Well, we're heading over to the other table where there is an all in. Martin Suzor raised under the gun. Alexander Everson has moved all in from under the gun plus one. Action is now on Liu, who asked for a count. Ten. Liu folds. Rounds the blinds. Salgado in the small. Are we on a pay jump or is this a genuine thought? We are on a pay jump. <laughs> he folds, Tori in the big blind. One, five, folds five, as well, five, it's back on Martin Suzor, the original Razor. Suzor the Razor calls. So Alexander Everson is at risk, but it looks like he's got it in with the best hand. He's got pocket tens, Suzor with pocket nines. Everson is the player at risk. He needs tens to hold. This will be the last hand of the level, by the way. Vines looking for a nine. King Jack Four, tens holding. Yeah, that looks about right. Turn card is an ace. Alexander Everson just has to fade a nine on the river. He does, he gets the double up through Martin Suzor. And we still have 16 players, no eliminations during the first session of play. This is an all in a call with a sick, sick race. Ace King versus Queens. The ultimate of races like window versus aisle, love versus money, food versus sex. This is one for the ages. 
Unfortunately, one player must end up the victor. Queen's a bigger favorite than usual due to some folded cards, I'm guessing. <laughs> Jack, nine, six, two clubs. Falcone okay. does have some back doors. At the moment, just aces and kings are out. If he doesn't hit one, he will be out. Eyed. The tournament area. Whoa. Big sweat now. Flush draw. Bola. Eyes here, flush. Aces, kings, and clubs. All on the side of Falcone. The river is the queen of wow. clubs. What a salty card for Shannon Shaw. Makes a set, but it gives Falcone the second nut flush. And that's enough to ship 1.5 million in a double up. Runner, runner, Indian summer. <clears throat> Late in August. Maybe the start of a penultimate day hot streak for Diego Falcone, who doubles up through Shannon Shore. Took him all five cards to get there. I hate the ace king versus queen's flip. Shannon Shore back down to 18 big blinds, had worked his way up to around 26 or 27 bigs. Joe, did you know in Silence of the Lambs, Anthony Hopkins doesn't blink in order <laughs> to, to appear more menacing, I guess, intimidating? <laughs> Mom, Bruma, so is all in. I, I feel like I knew that and forgot it. How much is it? You've been on a real uh, Hannibal been On a real Hannibal binge, yeah. yeah. Eating it up. Did you watch Manhunter yet? No. It's the only true Hannibal Lecter movie. I know, uh, James told me. In t typical James Hartigan fashion. I tweeted at you first about it, and then James came in sounding way more stupid about it. <coughs> Awkward spot here for the King Four. He's getting a very good price. Very good King. price. Better than two to one. He's already invested 200,000. Problem for him is it is 500k. He only has 2 million, 25% of his stack. It puts him in really bad shape. And yeah. chances are, best case scenario, he's live. He's going to be behind to a lot of pairs. He's going to be behind to a lot of ace highs. He's going to be dominated sometimes. But what are we working with here? 500K into a pot that would be 1.6. You know, he, he needs about 30% to call off. Maybe he has it. Not even. It's just one of those situations where you're full of regret. Yeah. You call and you see that you're live and you're like, okay, cool. I'm all right with this. All right. And well, he's priced in, makes the call. And he is live. Mambrou well, Masso has been very patiently waiting to get all in and called. He's in good shape for 38% of the time. He will be eliminated every time. Yep, so against his hand, the maths works out. He has uh, the right price. And as you say, Joe, he'll be delighted to see that his cards are live, but it's Mombrou Masso's tournament life at risk. 16 remain in the field. King, high, flop, one heart as well. He does not like to see it. Some might say he hates to see it. Two cards to come to save his tournament. Picks up additional outs on the turn. A 10 repeated keeps him alive. Will it be the Monbrun Masso miracle? Yes. Yes. Ace yeah. on the river. Never die. Never die, the he says. Monbrun Monson miracle.
courtesy of a demonic Barry Greenstein. Flames. Uh, so that's how you double up. You get it in with ace-10, give yourself a bit of a sweat. King on the flop, 10 on the turn, additional outs, finds the ace. And right back in the mix. Joe, we remain 16-handed. 16 players in the field. Have yet to lose one player today. Maybe the outer table will oblige us. Martin Sutsor all in, called by Felipe Salgado. Ace King of Hearts for Sutsor. Ace 10 of clubs for Salgado. The battle of the big suited aces. It's Domination Nation. Sutsor is the player at risk. But he is ahead by a wide margin. Your board, one club on the flop, Ace King, doing well otherwise. Salgado looking for some kind of sweat on the turn. That's a chop sweat. The river is a king. That's a pair of kings for suits, or he's going to double up. Salgado has slightly more than Salnada, just two 120,000 chips left behind by our calculations. That is 1.2 big blinds. On the verge of elimination after losing to the Ace King, Suitstore finds a big double up. We're going to be back in Barcelona next year for the Poker Stars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. The SPC 2020 will take place at Casino Barcelona from the 20th to the 24th of August. Between now and then, there's the chance to win a Platinum Pass, the dream ticket to this $25,000 tournament. If you want to win free entry to the next PSPC, head to PokerStars. Once again, our future feature table, Felipe Segato, Selgato has used all of his time bank chips pre-flop, trying to tank here for the pay jump. But he's all in. Right, action is on Giovanni Torre, who we have not seen much of. Tori re-raising. And that has gotten folds from Sutsor and Liu and Storakers. And it's pocket fours for Tori. Jack nine for Salgado, so it is a race. Salgado will be delighted to find himself flipping with the Jack-9. Like Darth Maul versus Kylo Ren, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. And the flop. Four in the door, full house. <laughs> Dead to runners is Salgado. Some very specific runners. Game over. We have finally lost our 16th place finisher, Felipe Salgado. Out 71,000 euros. We are down to 15, finally. So these are the big stacks right now, but even the chip leader is down to 66 big blinds. Everything just got a whole lot shallower because we've now jumped to the 60-120 blind level. So Balakrishna Patur, Ruiz Sousa are the two biggest stacks. Yunye Lu is going to be the big stack at our feature table because we have decided to flip the two tables. I'll flip you. Flip you for real. 
So these are the players in seat order. We're seven-handed on the main stage, eight-handed at the outer table. And I'm pretty sure most of these guys have at one point been at the feature table, apart from Giovanni Torre. So now everyone's had their turn under the lights. When we get down to nine, they will be down to a single table. The official final table is eight-handed. Hopefully we'll get to six tonight and then come back tomorrow and play for the trophy and first prize of 1.66 million euros. Everyone now guaranteed 81,130 euros. And we welcome back to the booth via the miracles of modern internet technology, Spraggy. Good afternoon. Good to be back, James. Good to hear your voice again. Spraggy on an AT&T video phone. And good Nokia 3310. <laughs> <laughs> and good that we can actually see the other players as well, having flipped the two tables. And I'm impressed at how Alexander Everson has managed to build a stack over the course of the day. You mean concerned stepdad? And to actually be second in chips at the table now behind Yunye Lu. So the shortest stack here is Martin Sujor, the EPT Prague 2016 runner-up. He's got a 22 big blind stack. But as we saw at the end of the last level, on our former feature table, you've got a guy with nine bigs, a player with 11 bigs, another one with 15 bigs. So we could be heading out to the outer table a fair few times. Looks like Suzor's coming in for the steal. 250,000 on the button. Mm. And check nine in the big blind. Good for a defend. Off to a flop. And a little bit of something for both of our players. We got the flush draw from Suksor. Liu with the gut shot straight draw. Up against a very wide range calling in the big blind. We spoke earlier about good bluffs. Situations where your opponent can do lots of folding. This is certainly one of those because the big blind's calling a lot of hands. He's going to miss very often. And also, it's good to have hands that can improve on later streets. This one, of course, the flush draw. So a nice continuation bet spot for Suxor to take. He does. 175,000. Having defended Jack-9, when Liu sees a board where he does connect fairly well, has a chance to improve, I think he'll be doing something other than just folding his hand. 680. Uh, that's something other than folding. He's coming in for a check raise. 680,000 announced. Applying pressure to what is perceived to be a wide continuation bet from Suxor on the button. Let's imagine Suxor C bets here with something like King Nine of Clubs. He's going to get a very quick fold, which means that Liu's bluff is going to be immediately profitable. We can see that Suxor has. A hand that's likely to continue, Queen Deuce of Hearts. This could get very interesting indeed. Suzor calls the check raise, this hand going to the turn. And two million chips already in this pot. There are some very fun turn cards indeed. Queen is one of them because Liu actually now turns open-ended and if he wants to put pressure on a hand like ace three of clubs then betting on this turn he can certainly represent that occasionally he's made a straight himself. But from Suzor's perspective Spraggy still has the flush draw now has a pair to go with it. Yep even more outs. If he was up against an ace, he can now hit a deuce or a queen to get there, to go along with his hearts. Liu not slowing down, 800,000. And that's the weird thing from Suzor's perspective, he may be thinking about what cards he needs. The irony being, he's actually got the best hand. Yep. And we may even see a situation where 
he realizes he has the best hand, right? If, he, if he's confident enough to say Liu is bluffing with 8-9 or Jack-9 or even a smaller flush draw, we may even see him hero all the way down. I think for the 800,000 chip price, given he also just picked up a pair, he won't be going anywhere. That is indeed a call. And this is a monstrous pot. 3.6 million chips, and we're off to an all-important river card. Neither player has pot behind. Sujol, the effective stack, with 1.81 million, and he rivers the flush. And it could be a situation where Liu attempts to represent that he has a flush. Some of his bluffs on the flop are going to be flush draws. And if Sugsaw gets here with ace three of clubs, it would make a hand like that a very difficult call. So Liu may fancy his chances of getting a fold by shoving this river. 1.8 million effective behind, about half pot. He's all in. Shoves on Suzor. Hard, hard, hard. Who double calls check. all in with the best hand and will get a huge double up through Liu. Ooh. What the hell? You just walked into it, buddy. You just represented the hand your opponent has. And now Martin Suzor is up over 60 bigs, 7.25 million. And Xiuan Liu has dropped down to 1.1 million. He's got nine big blinds, Spraggy. It's really unfortunate because I actually think his bluff's really good. He's going to have a lot of suited hands in the big blind. He can represent a lot of flushes. He can oh, represent yeah. some straights. His opponent is going to get to the river with some weak one pair hands. But unfortunately, as you say, James, he was representing the hand that his opponent had. Well, we are going to the other table where Shannon Shaw is all in with King-8, and he has been called by Pasquale Bracco with aces. Oh my god, he has aces! Shannon Shaw's EPT Barcelona main event life on the line. Huge underdog with five cards to come. Keeps running into aces. Gotta feel sorry for Shannon Shaw. Not out of it yet, though. King on the flop. Well, that's one pet. King or an eight? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Bracco filming the moment for posterity. Ace on the turn. That'll have Shannon Shaw drawing dead. It is over. Shannon Shaw eliminated in 15th place. Cashes for 81,130 euros. And we are down to 14 players as his chips slide across the table to this guy, Pasquale Bracco. Things are really starting to heat up now, James. Eliminations, huge pots, big swings. Starakas, 265,000 from the cutoff with 6-6. Six, six. Two of the deepest stacks, and Sukzor here with Ace King suited. Just going to call in the big blind, it looks like. Disguising his very strong hand and flops incredibly well. Top pair and the nut flush draw. 91% equity with two cards to come. Yeah. Now, this is a board where Starakas versus a big blind might want to take a continuation bet. Even folding out a hand like Jack-10 of hearts is going to be a win for him. Hard to get his hand to show down unless he forces a fold here. So we do see him bet, and bets pretty sizably. 540,000. It's a big bet. really could go either way with this. There are no bad turn cards for him. Versus that sizing, he may feel like his opponent's going to go big again on the turn. Chooses not to slow play, though. Raises it up to 1.6 million. Okay. 
think Starak is his hand. Obviously, he doesn't like getting check raised in this marginal spot. And Sixes does block some of the bluffs if his opponent is likely to bluff around the straight draws, like 6-7 or 6-9 even, 6-4. He does block some of those bluffs. Makes it a little bit more likely his opponent has one of the hands he's check raising for value. So if you're going to defend here, I think Sixes is not really where you want to start. He has a lot of stronger hands. <laughs> he does indeed let it go. Suxor with a pickup, flatting Ace King free flop, and flopping very well indeed. Up to nearly 7.7 .7 million, 64 big blinds with half this level still to play. We're going to the other table, an all-in from Cyril Mombrum Masso, called by Diego Falcone. And looks like we're joining this on the turn. Falcone flopped a flush with King Jack of Spades. And it looks like Cyril Mombrum Masso is drawing dead with 8-9. An inconsequential river card. And that is the end of Bron of the Blackwater. The master of coin is gone. The Frenchman exits in 13th place. Cyril Mombrum Masso cashes out for 90,860 euros. Au revoir, Cyril. Still smiles, gotta be happy with the outcome, 90,860 euros, no mean feat. As we rejoin the action, looks like we've got Two pair versus an open-ended straight draw here on the feature table. Bastillo looks like he's raised. Defending the big blind from Suitsaw with the 9-7. Check, check on the flop. Big brick turn. So worth pointing out that Bastillo only has 16 bigs behind. He was the pre-flop aggressor. Elected not to continue the flop with his open-ended draw. And with the lack of a C-bet, on the flop, Spraggy. No surprise to see Suzor leading here. Yep, certainly doesn't want this one to check through again. Definitely trying to build value now. No point having a good hand if you're not going to get paid. So he's coming out firing. 450,000. Bastillo's every right to consider the fact that his jack and his queen are still alive out. Suzor definitely going to be bluffing sometimes. I'm definitely occasionally just going to have a hand like a 10 where the queen and the jack are live. So may have as many as 14 outs. Play Plays a time bank card. It, it is a big bet, James. Yeah, and that card will get him an additional 30 seconds on the shot clock. He has just 1.9 million chips in his stack. This is 450,000 to call. So around 25% of them. Big moment. So easy at this point to spot the people who've never played in an actual card room questioning why he's wearing a coat. Over-officious air conditioning is the answer to your question. As Bastillo moves all in, snap call by Suzor, who is a four to one favorite here, and Bastillo is gonna need to spike a king or an eight on the river to survive. It's a gutsy play. I can say if he was up against the 10, he has 14 outs, he has just eight. Two pair, too strong. He qualified online. He's guaranteed his best result here in the EPT Barcelona main event. Does it end here? Is it a payday of 90K? 
three on the river. I know you've been waiting for this one. Okay. Bustillo mm. is busto. Leandro exits in 12th place. Cash is for 90,860 euros. We are down to 11. The remaining players have now all locked up six figure scores and we're two away from being down to one table. Joe Stapleton angrily rips up a full page of Bustillo puns. Gone too soon, but Suitsaw up to nearly 10 million chips, a huge hand for him. Yeah, he's the chip leader right now with close to 10 million. So we're going to come back with 11 players remaining as we play down to the final six. My thanks to Benjamin Sprague. Finton Hand will be providing analysis on the next level when the blinds go up to 80,000, 160,000, putting the pressure on some of those shorter stacks here at the Barcelona leg of the PokerStars European Poker Tour.